Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to pull the plugs, check out the plugs, check the compression on the cylinders, if everything goes well, um, see if I can adjust the accelerator pump. Uh, I left the charge in overnight, so it should start. This is an old battery that dies, but it'll take a charge. So we're going to see if this will fire up and get it closer to the tools. Actually just backed into this pole it made a hell of a sound but it didn't do any damage cars a lot longer than I thought I guess from the inside anyway all right let's pull these plugs see what we got great thing about these poly engines I'm sure you can see it I don't know how bad or good the lighting is but Spark plugs are right on top of the heads, so let's start removing them and keep them in order. I originally thought I'd probably find a plug or two fouled with oil, but we'll see. Always disconnect your battery. Safety first. Even when it's dead as a doornail. this to get this plug out. I don't remember. It should be enough. Piece of hose. Okay, the piece of hose is frozen. You can hear that crunching. Like everything I do is take two, take three, take four. Rarely take one. So I'm just saying these are easy to get to. Okay, first one out. That doesn't look very good. I don't 
think I dragged it through the sludge when I took it out, but that's possible. That one looks better, but it's got oil on it. These polys are creates like a where the spark plug is, it creates like a little I don't know, little bathtub above the exhaust manifold. I know when I put the marble in it and cranked it over out the plugs, it spit it out all over the in those little pockets. This one looks better. Again, covered with oil, but not burnt oil, just oil. I mean, if it was burning oil, that would be burned. That just like like oil came in after it was shut down. But what do I know? Hold the oil there. And he's flipping you back. This is probably the worst lighting. But there's no move in the car now. That one looks good. I'm not disappointed in that. Lots of oil on the threads. They seem tighter as they go back. Probably means absolutely nothing, but just making observations. Looks the same as the last one. Side, but it's on the threads. Once again, the same. I'm no expert plug reader, but that doesn't look bad to me. Maybe somebody out there is smarter than me, though. I like everyone out there, but it's not gobbed with oil burnt oil. Last one. That one is in there. Of course, I never changed these plugs. I just cleaned them, if I remember correctly. Like wire wheeled them, I think. Like that. got a little more carbon. That oil is from when I pulled it out. But yeah, definitely more carbon. Not sure how to interpret these. So there's all of them. I don't know how good or bad this is coming through. They all look good. That one has a little bit of carbon. 
That one looks like oil's getting through. But it could have just drained through those pockets on the outside. Try to get another view under the lights. And here we are under the LED lights. shadow let's try this Okay, on to the compression test. This will be fun to edit. I'd say that's pretty good. Plugs go in at a slight angle up and forward. That's 120. I guess 120 is not bad. I thought 145 was unheard of for an engine this old, but I'll take 120. Place your bets. One thirty. I mean, it's like one twenty six, seven. We'll call it one twenty six. Charge battery. Take two. Cylinder seven. Like one twenty four. Looks like one thirty five. So this side of the spark plugs go a little tiny bit up and a little backwards. It's definitely nice that they're right on top though. Too bad they don't make headers for this. Now we're up there again. That's 130 easy. Yeah, 135. Not too shabby. I mean, they do leak down a little bit. But I mean, it's so greasy in there. And this isn't the greatest tester. I heard it leaking earlier up top here. Last one, number one. That was 130 easy. So here are the results. Starting with one, we got 130, 135, 135, 124. Starting with two, 126, 130, 120, 145. So I put a charged battery on it when I got like a 90 or something on this one. This was the other battery. I mean, it was charged, it started it. But I'm not disappointed. I mean, the lowest one was the 120 here on number six. Like I said, this isn't the best tester. There's a lot of oil in between the little rubber grommets when you screw it in. So uh, overall, I'm not disappointed. I didn't get anything, you know, below 120. I think that's reasonable for an engine to run well. When I set the timing on this, well, I had pulled the distributor and made a, an oil pump rod to get the oil pressure and I had turned the motor over so I got oil up into the valve train on both sides and then when I went to set the timing it was six degrees I believe 
and there's really no timing mark on this there's no timing indicator down there there's no mark on the on the balancer it seems like and you probably can't see any of this but it seems like there were marks on the pulley but a lot of it looked like from like when it was made like it was pressed it's hard to tell so you know I stuck a screwdriver in the number one cylinder brought the piston up you know just kept turning it back and forth until I was sure it was dead top set top dead center put the distributor in and it starts I mean with a charged battery it'll start right up and even the accelerator pump seemed to be working today unless I'm confusing myself but I'm gonna clean the plugs up see if I can clean up the the area where the plugs go in on the heads get all the grease out of there and take it from there okay let's recap a couple things um, I cleaned the plugs off with the wire wheel um, the plugs were kind of loose when I took them out but I I did this engine first got it running it was bitter cold out so this might have some, something to do with it so I tightened up the plugs check the firing order I retorqued the intake manifold bolts because I put that intake on I checked the firing order I don't know what else to check right at the moment I did look up on the internet and I found that the timing marks are indeed on the lower belt pulley in two degree increments and it's six degrees is what the timing is the initial timing which I set it at you know months ago I don't really want to mess with that because I'd rather get some marks on that pulley that are visible when it's running but it does start right up um, so I'm gonna hook up the battery here and we'll see what happens see what it sounds like temperature starting to drop of course so I'm gonna have to wrap this up all right here goes nothing Let that stuff burn off. I don't know if you could hear anything I was saying. I couldn't hear what I was saying. Um, I got oil on the exhaust manifold when I was cleaning out those pockets and the heads. So we'll let this 
smoke show run for a while. So this is where the idle screw is. It's kind of hard to get to when the manifolds are smoking in your face. Even the idle mixture screws. It's just too much smoke. But I'll try to set the idle a little lower. The chokes wired open because it wasn't working, I think, if I remember correctly. All right, let's start it again. dropping um, I don't have a tester but I figured I'd put my timing light I just put my timing light on the plug wires and all these were triggering the timing light the this one was this one would intermittently and these two wouldn't at all so I stuck it on the coil wire well I changed the coil wire first and then I stuck the timing light thing on the coil wire. And every time this thing stumbled, um, the strobe light would follow suit. So I imagine it's the coil. The points look brand new. So I'll do a little research tonight. Or maybe I'll just get a coil tomorrow and see what happens. But that's it for now. A little update on the Valiant. I painted it with the Eastwood Rust Converter because it was really scaly. I cleaned out the bathtubs. So I just wanted to get that converted because it was, it was pretty scaly. But it wasn't rotted through anywhere. So I'm waiting for parts on this thing. The UPS guy drove by today but he didn't stop. That's a horrible feeling. So I guess I'll be waiting till Monday. 
Alrighty. So, if I have time tomorrow, I'll get a coil for this. And we'll take it from there. So, it's the next day. It's a little warmer. Um, I found my meter, and the batteries had exploded in it. But I cleaned it out, and I think it'll work. What I'm going to do is test the condenser on this, and test the coil, and take it from there, because I don't think it's firing on all cylinders, obviously, at this point. Um, and then we'll take it from there. I have an extra condenser, or two. I don't have an extra coil, so we'll see where it takes us. So my understanding is you ground it out to itself to discharge it, set the meter to ohms, and then we're gonna do this with one hand. Red to there, ground to the case, and it the ohm should increase. Okay, so that means the condenser's good. If it went high right away, then the condenser is bad. It's my understanding anyway. So that looks like a good condenser. And then you discharge it. So let's test the coil. There's a primary side. One point eight. And then there's secondary. It's hard to do this with one hand, but should be much higher so I think that coils good so the next thing I'm gonna do is check the point gap and we'll go from there okay so this car had another what I'm assuming is condenser that was hooked to the positive side of the coil and I tested it as well and when I can get a good ground on it, it increases. So we'll call that good. I'll probably clean up the ground on it. So I looked up the point gap on a 58 Dodge 325 Poly, and it's supposed to be 0 0.014 to 0 0.018. So this is 0 0.016. And as you can see, there is no gap. That is basically touching. So that might have something to do with it. So I think I found another issue. These points, they're not actually screwed into the distributor here. I believe this tab should be on the other side of this piece and screwed in with the wiring and not just hanging out there. So no one around here has points available. So I'm going to straighten this. The points themselves need to be cleaned up. So I've done some more research and apparently the points that originally came on this car, this plastic piece was actually metal and there were two of these tabs coming off. One coming off the center and one coming off, same as this one, for the points. And what they would, what they had was like a plastic piece that was like a U shape, and that would screw onto the distributor. And from what I can see in pictures, the copper piece, which was on the center hub, would be grounded to the distributor, and this would be sent to the coil wire so since I don't have that and this doesn't need to be grounded because it's plastic 
I think what I'm going to do is rob this isolator so that it's set up the same way where this is not grounded to the distributor. It just goes to the coil wire. So we'll try that. I don't know how this thing ran with this piece being grounded to the distributor. Okay, scratch that. It appears this is isolated from the distributor. There's a little plastic piece under it. So I think I can just bolt the points back up the way it was, except this time actually screw them down. Okay, let's recap everything I did here. Charge the battery, check the compression on all the cylinders, clean up the plugs, check the plugs and wires, clean up all the connections. Uh, I gapped the points to 0 0.016. They're supposed to be between 0 0.014 and 18. Check the condenser check the coil, check that other condenser on the coil, which I'm not sure what that does. So I just got to put the rotor on it, put the cap back on it, hook the battery up, and we'll see if it starts and runs on all eight cylinders, because I don't think it's been running on eight cylinders at all. That was my failed attempt at trying to make this run better and on all cylinders. Um, clearly, I don't know enough about points or don't have the correct tools to figure this one out. But the good news is it's got compression in all the cylinders. I, I think it could run really well. I just need to do some more research, maybe get some help, get some of opinion, some feedback, but I'm not going to give up. 
just a little disappointing. So early on I had taken my timing light and I would put it over the plug wires to see if they were firing and the number what was it? The one number two and eight weren't. So I just did it with the plug wire on the plug and the motor and it wasn't strobe the strobe light wasn't going. When I do it now it's doing it. And as you can see this plug is firing. I hope you can see that. But when I pulled the plug wire, it didn't change how it ran. So, I had also switched the wires. And it was still getting the same thing. These two outer cylinders weren't firing. So maybe the plugs are shot. I'm going to pull them and see. I'm still here an hour or so later. Still trying to figure something out. I will not be defeated. I actually ran out of gas and I was like, I don't know what's going on now. But I figured it out. And the battery died, the other battery. So, I'll, I'll be here. So here we are like a week later. I've ordered points at least three times and each time they're wrong they're for a distributor that spins the other way so I finally got the correct set and had to drive to several Napa's to find it and right off the bat I don't believe it I thought I checked it at the place but this spring it comes separate I've seen that before this is the copper strip. It's very flimsy, so you need this piece. But it's for points that spin, or for a distributor that spins the opposite way. So in order to make this work, I have to flip it over and you insert it into there. But then where it slides on to the bolt and the distributor, it's upside down. But I can make it work. I'm not driving a half hour pack. Anyhow, so... I'm kind of convinced it's the points. I talked to a gentleman who knows his stuff on distributors, that's all he does. And he said that it's possible that this distributor of mine is, the bushings are bad, which would cause it to, it would cause the shaft to be out of, I don't know what the tolerances are. Um, he said it, you know, it'll come up and down. That's normal. So I don't think it's too far off. He said crank it with the rotor off, and if you see it wobble, then you know the bushings are bad. And I did that already, which I'll throw a clip in. <laughs> wobble in the distributor shaft when you're cranking the engine so I'm gonna try these points I'm definitely convinced it's not running on eight cylinders he had said to me I told him about the test I did where I put the timing light on the plug wires and he said two and eight are opposite on the distributor so that would make sense for the if it was wobbling the bushings were bad but I'm not seeing that so he suggested try points first so that's where we're at so it's the next day it got so cold yesterday I thought I had frostbite on my fingers I had to make this out of a bolt because the screw that was going into this was too short it was a flat head I couldn't get it with a short screwdriver and it was a hexagon on the end but every side was a different size so a wrench of any type wouldn't fit on it. So there's two springs here. One's copper, one's regular steel. The copper one went right over this. The steel one, I had to get it under it, which was not an easy task. So here we are. I'm going to put a nut on the end of this, hook these wires back up, rotor on, cap on, and we'll find out once and for all after I adjust the points, of course. 
if it's the points or the distributor's out of whack somehow. So I had to pull the distributor because what? I dropped the screw. Of course I did. I even had a magnet on the screwdriver and it just fell in and that was the end of it. So onward. Okay, ready to go. Gap dip. Point one six. Doesn't get any better. It's definitely easier doing with it out. Probably should have pulled it in the first place. Alright, let's stab it in and start it. Let's uh give it a go.
running better, but not as good as I'd like. I, I still think there's something wrong with it. It's not popping like it used to, but I can't really, you know, floor it through the neighborhood with no exhaust on it. I'm not disappointed, but I'm not thrilled. But we'll keep working on it. There's other things to do on it, that's for sure. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like what I should do with this, what I should test. That guy I spoke to seemed to think the distributor's out of whack. But it's, like I said, it's not popping anymore. But it, it doesn't feel like it's, it's all there yet. I'm more than willing to try anything. I'm working on this car in between stuff, in between other cars and other projects. Mostly outside, mostly in the cold. So, I could definitely use some input. Well, that's going to end it for this one. I appreciate all the feedback, all the comments, all the subscribers. It really helps. Helps to keep us motivated. It's supposed to be like 50 and sunny today, and it's barely 40, so. The weatherman, once again. Alrighty. Thanks for watching. So today, I'm actually loading this thing up in my truck. Tomorrow I'm going out to my friend's shop. He's got all sorts of old, cool equipment. You know, old lays and I don't know what, things that weigh a couple tons. He's got a huge shop. He makes stuff. He's going to help me. I'm going to take this one out to him. This is a Wayne 276. And I actually have another one over at his place right now that's in worse shape. But we're going to take this one and the parts I have. And we're going to make two. We're going to make a nice one and we're going to make one that can sit outside. And we're going to look around and see what projects he has.